Still with us uh, in the studio is the Sun's uh, defence editor, Jerome Starkey. Uh, not strictly your area, Jerome, but uh, I think everyone's got a view on this. Uh, what the hell do you think is going on up in Scotland? Well, it sounds perhaps like there may be a spate of, uh, of, of comedy complaints there and maybe are. suggesting <laughs> that, you know, that uh, people are taking the mick or seeing, seeing, seeing the funny side. It's one of these laws, isn't it, that where this is something that matters a huge amount to a very small number of people. Uh, and, and, you know, it's, it's occupying a lot of, uh, of our airtime, a lot of uh, parliamentary time and, and uh, space, both in newspapers and, and on air. But uh, perhaps, uh, perhaps the Scots are seeing the lighter side. Yeah, I mean, to sort of take you down a bit of a tangent, which might sort of bring you back round to your more familiar territory, it's interesting, isn't it? Because countries like Russia often use these things as a stick to hit us with and point at the West and say, well, look at their madness. Look at their saying that women can have penises. Look at all of this sort of extremely left-wing activism. Um, on some level, he's right, and very often our enemies use this against us. Look, I personally think, you know, what makes this a great country is that we are a tolerant country and it's our tolerance and it's our democracy and it's our uh, support of each other's diverse views, uh, which is one of our strengths. And I think that's also something that Vladimir Putin finds incredibly threatening. The fact that we can have open discussions and we can allow people who we disagree not, with vehemently. Not in Scotland anymore. Apparently that's now gone. <laughs> Vladimir has never been threatened by Scotland. <laughs> Maybe he's going to annex Scotland and, yeah. uh, you know, go after but, our But, I mean, J.K. JK, JK Rowling... Uh, uh, by the way, I think it's supposed to be rolling, isn't it? I never it's, know when it's... It's rolling. supposed to be rolling. I keep, like I keep Barry, veering David back to Bowie, rowling. Rowling, yeah. rolling. Yeah. The O.W. is always... Well, we'll try and remember. I think it's supposed to be one. rolling. Anyway, J.K. Rowling has obviously scored a sort of sensational victory over Hamza Youssef and the SNP here by saying, here, I've called all these trans mm. women men, blokes. What are you going to do about it? It's not criminal. Therefore, she's challenged this law triumphantly, really. Uh, so it's 1-0 to JK so far. Uh, the uh, question is, is uh, Ali McCoist, our uh, um, TalkSport colleague, a TalkSport presenter, former Rangers footballer, of course, uh, he's pointed out that on Sunday you're going to get the old firm derby match, the famous Celtic Rangers derby match. Ali said he was going to go in the, uh, but he's changed his mind. But as he said, 48,000 fans at Ibrox will be chanting their traditional. Uh, I hate. I, I hesitate to say hate filled, but shall we say aggressive sectarian chants at each other? It's what they do at every one of these games. And as Ali pointed out, he said, from the moment that whistle goes, 48,000 people will be breaking the new hate laws. Uh, this is the problem. This, these hate laws uh, don't actually seem to make any sense. And as police chiefs have stressed, they're going to find it damn near impossible to enforce. It's the policemen we should feel sorry for because, you know, there they are left carrying the can. They don't make the law, but they're required to enforce it. And it would strike me that perhaps the politicians don't have that in mind when they're trying to score points with their constituencies by passing uh, one law or another you know, to make the politicians look good, uh, not necessarily thinking about what the police... You know, what that's going to mean for the bobby on the beat in Scotland. Yeah. It also makes us, I think, a ludicrously divided country instead of the United Kingdom, where something you say at your dinner table in Scotland could get you reported to the police. And then if you just went, you know, metre below Hadrian's Wall and said the same thing, nothing, you're perfectly allowed to. Yeah, as I said, I, I like the idea of a trans woman one yard into Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> Me, one yard into England, <laughs> shouting across the border, you're a bloke in a dress! Is that against the law? I don't know. I mean, it's not against the law in Britain. But now it looks like it's not against the law in Scotland either. But what J.K. Rowling has said uh, impressively, and she's been very impressive throughout this, is it's all very well for her to get away with it, as it were, because she's rich, powerful, very famous woman of influence. Uh, but she says she will come to the defence of any lower-profile woman, say, not a celebrity, anyone else, any female or male, for that matter, who wants to say a trans woman is a bloke, uh, J.K. Rowling will defend them, will help them. Uh, so she's taking a very uh, impressive stance against these sinister new laws. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. She is. And, and thank goodness she is, because when this low-profile woman <laughs> commits a hate crime in Scotland, I'll be calling on those Harry Potter prophets to get me out of trouble. <laughs>